Let's return to our diagramming tool, Draw.io. You can see here I have a, a more expanded version of the person class. So what would happen if we created an app that had a person that was representing both a teacher and a student, and the student had a report card? We would have multiple classes joined together with relationships on a UML diagram. And that's what we're going to create in this video. Let's take a look at what we've done here with our game. So I've created this game object at the top of the chart here, and it's kind of a generic object. But it extends into player and enemy. And you notice that the, the features or the properties of the game object are common to both players and enemies. For instance, they both have a name, they both have a color, they both have hit points, X and Y position and a speed. What is unique to the enemy is that he has a Boolean variable called visible, so he can disappear. The player gains experience points and has a limited number of bullets. So those are unique to the player, this is unique to the enemy. So in object-oriented programming, we call this inheritance, where a single object that is somewhat generic would extend into more specific examples of an object on a game. So we would make a super class to combine the common elements of both the player and the enemy and put them in one place. So let's put another class above these and then we're going to say that this class is the super or the parent of the others. So to show the super class how it relates to the player we would go back into the palette here. So let's search in here and find extends. Here it is, generalization extends. So I'm going to drag one of these out. So the arrow end point, the arrow tip, goes to the player. So this super class is going to extend to create each of these items below it. Now let's take a look at the properties that are common to both of these. So we would have a name for both of these. So if I put name up here, then that means I do not need it down here. So what is going to happen is that everything that is common will go in the super class and then the player class beneath it will inherit from the the super. So it turns out that the super class is showing us that the enemy and the player actually have a lot in common. So then I come down to the bottom and I can leave the ones that are not in common to both of these. So let's take a look at enemy. He has hit points, a speed, position. About the only thing I see that is not common to both of them is that the enemies are able to be invisible. So I'm going to give the player experience points and the number of bullets left that he can shoot. And so I might be able to change those as he picks up new bullets during the game. The enemy only has the ability of disappearing and reappearing that does not share with the player. All right, let's talk about the methods. What kind of things would we see in the combination between these two? So I could see, so set color might be the uh, common part between them both. So I can also update my player using the X position and the Y position. So let's take a look at some of the things that we should probably delete now. So set color is also in the super class. Uh, we also have set name. Let's leave him in the super class as well. All right, so now we have an enemy and a player that inherit their properties and their methods from a super class. Now, what is this super class name? So if we were to just to have a generic object in our game, we would call it a game object maybe. And so a game object doesn't actually exist by itself. It is an only uh, an inheritor of the player and the enemy.